we sometimes dream that man will one day learn how to use the sun's energy for his service. Sir Arthur Eddington, 1920. Hello and welcome to the free online version of the Fusion Research Lecture. My name is Alf and this is a YouTube channel called Der Plasma. And the intention of this lecture is that you understand that this quote from a hundred years has evolved. Fusion is no longer a dream, but rather a very concrete idea based on some solid plans. This lecture is part of a physics master's program focused on nuclear fusion and requires some basic physics knowledge and some basic plasma physics knowledge. The intention is to give an overview over the wide field of fusion research, allowing you to look deeper into specific topics. It is focused on magnetic confinement configurations, thus we will not talk about inertial confinement or alternative concepts, although we might mention them towards the end of the lecture. The presented uh, equations will not be rigorously derived, but rather the required physical principles will be mentioned or sketched out. So let's have a look at the underlying literature. At first, there is this book, uh, by Professor Stroth, Plasma Physik Phenomene, Grundlagen and Anwendungen, on which this lecture is actually based. Professor Stroth works at the Max Planck Institute, and although this book is written in German, uh, its diagrams and plots are kind of international, so it is still definitely worth a look. The second book, written by Francis F. Chen in Indispensable Truth, gives you a very nice and broad and general introduction to the field of fusion, so you do not need a physics degree for that, but some physics interest is uh, sufficient. This is a very nice read and I can strongly recommend to look into that. The third book is a very comprehensive textbook about fusion published by the EIA under the given web address and it is very, as I said, comprehensive. It contains something like 800 pages and dives deep into the different topics of fusion physics. The fourth book is a classics written by Wesson called Tokamaks it describes everything there is to know basically uh, for Tokamax. It gives it some very nice graphics, some very nice scalings. And you will find that book, I guess I, I dare to say, you will find that book in most of the fusion researchers uh, offices, or at least definitely in every library there is, but in a lot of offices from, from fusion researchers. The fifth book, written by Hartmut Sohm, by Professor Hartmut Sohm, who is also a professor at the Max Planck Institute, like Ulrich Stroth. This one is called Magnetohydrodynamic Stability of Tokamax. And as its title suggests, it only deals with stability issues in Tokamax. So it is kind of an extension, if you want, of Wesson's book, and it is more up to date. And uh, it also is really worth a read if you're into the topic of stability issues. So let's have a look into the outline of this lecture. Six chapters. The first chapter entitled Fusion Research describes first a bit of the history, the different confinement concepts, the fusion reactions, and the key parameters important in fusion research. If you want, it uh, provides you with the necessary vocabulary. The second chapter deals with magnetic field configurations, tokamak and stellarator. It will describe both of them. Um, and partly describes the differences already. The third chapter describes the parameter limits for fusion plasmas, so what actually limits the performance of fusion plasmas, and we will see that this is different for tokamak and stellarator. Chapter four describes the particle trajectories in tokamak and stellarator, and again we will see that there is a fundamental difference, at least partly, between these two. But there are also some common concepts, as we will see. Chapter 5 deals with collisional transport and the resulting losses. We will see that the introduction of a magnetic field does not only increase the confinement, but can also lead to additional losses. Again, there are some differences between tokamak and stellarators, which we will highlight and discuss in detail. Chapter 6 deals with losses due to turbulence. We will first give a brief reminder on the turbulence of neutral fluids and then see how the introduction of the magnetic field changes the turbulent behavior. We'll talk a bit about diagnostics of turbulence in magnetized plasmas, things of, of, like the L and the H mode, if you know that, and how this is all important for achieving a steady state burning fusion plasma. 
On the right hand side, you see the most prominent example of a fusion device. This is the ETA Tokamak, the largest Tokamak, um, which is currently being built. The first plasma is supposed to start in 2025. It is built in southern France. To give you an idea of the size, you see here on the uh, bottom in yellow, this is approximately the size of a human being there, allowing you to get an idea of the enormous uh, size of the set of the device. It is important because it should show for the first time that we are able to release more power from the fusion plasma than we actually needed to heat it up. Okay, that's it for the introduction. If you have any kind of questions or comments, just write them down in the comments. Let me know. I'll try to answer them. And I hope to see you again in the next lecture. Have fun and enjoy.